Hello students and good morning to you all. So today also uh, I am doing class for class 12 and I welcome you all in my online class. So today we will do the same chapter that is continuity of a function. In the last online class also we did some problems on continuity of a function. So today also we will do more problems on continuity of a function. Okay. So it is page number 256, same exercise, exercise 2a, each question carries 5 marks, right? So let us do question number 1 of 3, 3 number 1. A function f of x is defined as follows. The function f of x is defined as follows. It is given that f of x is equal to x sine 1 upon x when x not equal to 0. So what is meant by x not equal to 0? x not equal to 0 means either x is greater than 0 or x less than 0. For x greater than 0, we are using the same function of x that is x sine 1 upon x. Also, if x is greater than 0, we are using the same function that is f of x is equal to x sine 1 upon x. But if x exactly equal to 0, then f of x is equal to 0. So in this case, if x is greater than 0, we are using the same function that is f of x is equal to x sine 1 upon x. And also if x is greater than 0, we are using the same function that is f of x is equal to x sine 1 upon x. The x greater than 0 or x less than 0 ko lagi hamile, your same function e use gar so bane. No need of getting the separate right hand limit and left hand limit. I already told you this about this in the previous online class. So if you uh, use uh, the same function for x greater than 0 and x less than 0. No need of getting the separate right hand limit and left hand limit when x tends to 0. Okay. So just find out limit x tends to 0 f of x. Right. So the solution is limit x tends to 0 f of x. Baneko SMA right hand limit pani ayo left hand limit pani ayo this. The x tends to 0, baneko, x is approaching towards 0 either from the right hand side or from the left hand side. So, SMI am right, right hand limit when you have left hand limit when you have So, which is equal to limit x tends to 0. Uh, then, what is f of x? It is x sine 1 upon x. We can separate the limit out here. Which is equal to limit x tends to 0 x into limit x tends to 0 this is sin 1 upon x this is not the standard limit right this is not your standard limit okay so now these are the limit is separated for both x as well as sin 1 upon x so we have written here limit x tends to 0 x into limit x tends to 0 sin 1 by x Yedi u term ma x is equal to 0 bhae go bhae sin 1 upon 0 bhae go undefined quantity. Sin undefined quantity is also is always undefined quantity. Yedi ya x is equal to 0 bhae go bhae 1 by 0 bhae go undefined quantity. Sin undefined quantity bhae go undefined quantity. That is the limit does not exist in that case. But since x exactly not equal to 0 out here x is approaching towards 0 from the left hand side or from the right hand side but x not exactly equal to 0 in this case okay so we cannot put x is equal to 0 directly out here so this limit has a finite value so this limit exists or this limit has a finite value or it has got a defined value is that clear so which is equal to what is limit x tends to 0 x since x is approaching to a 0, you can put 0 out here. 0 into, since your limit x tends to 0. So this limit has got a finite limit into finite limit. That is, it has got a definite finite value. Or you can write here into uh, this limit x tends to 0, sine 1 by x exists. And it has got a definite finite value into a definite definite finite value so zero into any number is always zero so we have got limit x tends to zero f of x is equal to what it is always zero 
right so limit x tends to 0 f of x this 0 into definite finite value is always 0 so we have got limit x tends to 0 f of x is equal to 0 both right hand limit and left hand limit are included in this limit which is equal to 0 right now you have to get the value of f of x at x is equal to 0 right so at x is equal to 0 what will you write f of x is equal to 0 so in the question itself it is given f of x is equal to 0 now you put x is equal to 0 that is f of 0 is equal to 0 right so since this right hand limit is your left hand limit is equal to 0 and f of 0 is also 0 that means all the three values that is right hand limit is equal to left hand limit is equal to value of the function at x is equal to 0 that means the function is continuous at x is equal to 0 so you have to write since limit x tends to 0 f of x is equal to f of 0 therefore what can you write therefore the function or the given function the given function f of x is continuous is continuous at x is equal to 0 proved therefore the function the given function f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 is that clear to all of you so we'll do the next problem now So now we are doing the next question that is two of question number three. You have to test the continuity of the function f of x. You have to test the continuity of the function f of x. Whether this function f of x, f of x is continuous for all real values of x or not. Okay. Now f of x is equal to what is given here. The function of x is equal to x square sine one upon x when x not equal to zero. You know the meaning of x not equal to zero. In this case x is greater than 0 and x less than 0 okay now for x greater than 0 and x less than 0 what is the value for f of x it is x square sine 1 upon x but when x is equal to 0 what is the value for f of x it is 0 now you have to test the continuity of the function f of x that is you have to check whether the given function f of x is continuous or not for all real values of x all defined values of x okay so in this case, this x is equal to 0 ma pahela check on. So u x is equal to 0 ma me check also pahela whether it is continuous or not. Whether it is continuous or not. I mean a doubt la gaya abo. Yo continuity unu pa ni saksa, no unu pa saksa. Yo function of x continuous unu pa ni saksa, no unu pa saksa at x is equal to 0. So this is the doubtful case, isn't it? This is the doubtful case in this case. Okay. Now you have to check whether the given function f of x is continuous or not at x is equal to 0 first. So if you get the continuity at x is equal to 0, you can write down that the given function f of x is continuous for all real values of x or all defined values of x. Uh, I told you the meaning of real values of x, isn't it? Real values of x when secure defined values of x. Okay, so let us do the solution now. Uh, so in this case also for x greater than 0 and x less than 0 we are using the same function of x which is equal to x square sine 1 by x. So in this case also no need of getting the separate right hand limit and left hand limit. Is that clear? So just find out limit x tends to 0 f of x. Is that clear to all of you? So which is equal to limit x tends to 0 what is f of x this is x square sine 1 upon x so this is also the this is also not the standard form so you can write down limit for both this expression wherever there is x you have to write down the limit in this case okay so limit x tends to 0 x square into uh, this is your dot means this dot means multiplication right limit x tends to 0 sine 1 upon x is that clear 
so which is equal to now next in the next step you can put here x is equal to 0 here x is approaching towards 0 x is going nearer and nearer to 0 that means 0 is square the 0 is square this is your 0 is square into now in this case since x tends to 0 means x exactly not equal to 0 so this sin 1 by x has got a definite finite value right so in my previous example I explain gare. so x is equal to 0 but 1 by 0 is undefined sin undefined quantity is always undefined quantity that is your the limit does not exist but in this case x is approaching towards 0 but x exactly not equal to 0 so this limit has got a finite value is that clear so you can write here a definite finite value or definite finite value right so what is 0 square 0 square is always 0 0 into or definite finite value is always 0 that means both right hand limit and left hand limit is equal to what 0 is that clear now you have to get the value of the function f of x when x is equal to 0 so at x is equal to 0 what is the value for f of x which is equal to 0 so f of x is equal to 0 that means f of 0 is equal to 0 that is right hand limit is your left hand limit is equal to 0 also f of 0 is equal to 0 all these three are equal that means the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 so therefore you can write limit x tends to 0 f of x is equal to f of 0 because both the values here are 0 so what can you write therefore the function the function f of x is continuous is continuous at x is equal to 0 so the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 means the function f of x is continuous for all real values of x so here you can write hence hence the given function hence the given function f of x is continuous is continuous for all real values of x is continuous for all real values of x so it is proved so i think you have understood it so you can copy it we'll do the next question now So now we'll do the next question that is uh, four number one. Each question carries five marks. Exercise two a. So question number four number one is a function f of x is defined as follows. So how is the function f of x defined out here? f of x is equal to x plus one for x less than or equal to one. The is my key thing x less than one with x is equal to one with f of x value this x plus one. Also, it is given that when x greater than 1, f of x is equal to 3 minus ax square. So, it is strictly greater than 1. So, for x greater than 1, you will use f of x is equal to 3 minus ax square. If x is less than 1, we will use f of x is equal to x plus 1. So, for x greater than 1 and x less than 1, we are using the different functions of x. We are using different values for f of x. So in this case, you have to find out the separate right hand limit and left hand limit in this in this case. So if you are using the different values of f of x for both right hand limit and left hand limit, so you have to find out the separate right hand limit and left hand limit in this case. But for both uh, either it may be x greater than 1 or x less than 1 if uh, if you are if you are using the same function of x 
if we are using the same values of f of x so in that case no need of getting the separate right hand limit and left hand limit okay but in this case for x greater than 1 and x less than 1 we are using the different functions of f of x so in this case you are to find out the separate right hand limit and left hand limit i think you have understood it what i mean to say the yam ali ke bannu khojeko bhanda feri yedi timerle x greater than 1 or x less than 1 ko lagi same function of x use gare bhane tes ma hami le separate right hand limit or left hand limit nikalnu pardaina just find out limit x tends to 1 f of x tara yo particular problem ma hami yaha ke dekhyau bhanda feri x greater than 1 ma bindai value of f of x cha ani x less than 1 ma bindai value of f of x cha तो ये तो खाली प्रॉब्लम सब ने हमें ले सेपरेट राइट हैंड लिमिट रा लेफ्ट हैंड लिमिट निकालना पड़ता है तो ठीक सा तो यह क्या बंदे साब हो यो से गिवन फंक्शन ऑफ एक्स बायो मलिति माले यो बारे बुझाए अब यह क्वेश्चन में क्या बंदे सा इफ एफ ऑफ एक्स इज कंटिन्यूअस एट एक्स इज गुलो वन तो क्वेश्चन देखिए बंदा ऐसा बंदा भरी द फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एक्स इज कंटिन्यूअस एट एक्स इज इक्वल वन बंदों को मतलब राइट हैंड लिमिट एट एक्स इज इक्वल वन इज इक्वल टू लेफ्ट हैंड लिमिट एट एक्स इज इक्वल वन इज इक्वल टू द वैल्यू ऑफ द फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एक्स व्हेन एक्स एक्जेक्टली इक्वल टू वन आर ऑल इक्वल ऑल दिस थ्री आर इक्वल सो यू हैव टू गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ ए so if the function of एफ ऑफ एक्स इज कंटिन्यूअस एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन देन यू हैव टू गेट द वैल्यू फॉर ए ओके ए को वैल्यू से कति हो त्यो निकाल्नु पर्यो द फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एक्स इज कंटिन्यूअस एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन भने बुझे थिए मैले राइट ह्यान्ड लिमिट एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन इज इक्वल टू लेफ्ट ह्यान्ड लिमिट एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन इज इक्वल टू एफ ऑफ वन सो इफ ऑल दिस थ्री आर इक्वल देन यू हैव टू गेट द वैल्यू फॉर ए इज दैट क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो लेट अस डू द सॉल्यूशन नाउ सो लेट अस फर्स्ट फाइंड आउट द राइट ह्यान्ड लिमिट ओके सो लेट अस डू द सॉल्यूशन फॉर राइट ह्यान्ड लिमिट for right hand limit what do we write so you have to check at x is equal to 1 right so limit x tends to 1 plus this is your right hand limit 1 plus means x is approaching towards 1 from which side from the right hand side and all the values of x on the right of x is equal to 1 are greater than 1 okay so here f of x which is equal to limit x tends to 1 plus so x tends to 1 plus means x is approaching towards 1 from the right hand side and on the right of x is equal to 1 all the values of x are greater than 1 so what is the value for f of x when x greater than 1 when x greater than 1 what is the value for f of x it is 3 minus x square so it is 3 minus x square is that clear to all of you so which is equal to now so which is equal to now x tends to 1 plus means x is approaching towards 1 from the right hand side only so you can put x is equal to 1 in this case okay so 3 minus a into 1 whole square which is equal to this is your 3 minus a is it clear to all of you so i think you have understood it okay now for left hand limit so let us write for left hand limit for left hand limit how will you write down the left hand limit now you can write here limit x tends to 1 minus so x tends to 1 minus means x is approaching towards 1 from the left hand side and on the left side of x is equal to 1 all the values of x are less than 1 in this case so x is equal to 1 ko left pati jati pani x ko values are uncha sappai ke uncha less than 1 uncha hai na just say you 1 ba x is equal to 1 ta eta pati ke bata x is equal to 0 x is equal to minus 1 on the right of x is 1 x is equal to 2 x is equal to 3 and so on right the right side of x is equal to 1 eta pati right pati x value sappai greater than 1 cha yaha right and on the left and on the left and on the left all the values of x are less than 1 is that clear to all of you so this is a normal line so you can draw the normal line in order to understand this question right so x tends to 1 minus f of x so is equal to limit 
x tends to 1 minus means I already told you that x is approaching towards 1 from the left hand side and on the left of x is equal to 1 all the values of x are less than 1. So what is the value for f of x when x less than 1? x less than 1 that is f of x value because this is x plus 1. So you can write here x plus 1 which is equal to x tends to 1 minus means number 1 only so you can put 1 plus 1 number 1 so number 1 takes a limit x tends to 1 minus x plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 is that clear to all of you number 1 so you can put here x tends to 1 minus means x is equal to 1 so 1 plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 is it clear to all of you so we have got the left hand side now you have to get the value of the function f of x when x exactly equal to 1 so at x is equal to 1 the x is equal to 1 can answer that x is equal to 1 the x my so f of x is equal to x plus 1 so therefore f of x is equal to x plus 1 is that clear to all of you so you put x is equal to 1 here f of 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 so I think you have understood it. So now it is given that since f of x is continuous at x is equal to 1, you can write down that this right hand limit is equal to left hand limit is equal to the value of the function when x is equal to 1. That is f of 1, right? So let us write here since, since f of x is continuous since f of x is continuous at x is equal to 1 therefore so what can you write here limit x tends to 1 plus f of x that is your right hand limit is equal to limit x tends to 1 minus f of x that is your left hand limit which is equal to f of 1 so this is the definition of continuity of a function f of x at x is equal to 1 right so or uh, what was the right hand limit this 3 minus a was the right hand limit isn't it so write down 3 minus a is equal to what is the left hand limit in this case it is 2 which is equal to 2 right is equal to what is the value for f of 1 that is also 2 is that clear to all of you so you have to get the value for a so you can equate either first is equal to second or first is equal to third. So you can write first is equal to second. So what is the value for a minus a is equal to 2 minus 3 or minus a is equal to minus 1. From both the sides a gets cancels. So a is equal to 1. So for a is equal to 1 the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to 1. So the correct answer is what is the value for a? a is equal to 1. So I think you have understood it. So you can copy it. We'll do the next question now. So now let's start this question number four, number two. Let's do this question number four, number two. A function f of x is defined as follows. So how is the function f of x is defined here? It is given f of x is equal to ax plus one when x less than or equal to three. That means when x less than three, we have to use f of x is equal to x plus one. Again, when x is equal to 3, we are using the same function f of x is equal to ax plus 1. Is that clear? <coughs> but when x greater than 3, what is the value for f of x? It is bx plus 3, right? Now, what is given here? If the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to 3, then you have to get the relation between a and b. So in the question, it is given that f of x is continuous at x is equal to 3. So by definition, what can you write? You have to get the right hand limit at x is equal to 3, left hand limit at x is equal to 3, and the value of the function when x exactly equal to 3. So if all these three are equal, then it is continuous. Then you have to get the relation between a and b. 
Is that clear? So in this case also, for x greater than 3 and x less than 3, we are, we are using the different functions of x. We are using the different values of f of x. So in this case, you have to get the separate right hand limit and left hand limit. So let's do the solution now. So let us write down for right hand limit. For right hand limit, what can you write at x is equal to 3? Limit x tends to what? It is 3 plus f of x which is equal to limit x tends to 3 plus so what is the meaning of x tends to 3 plus it means that x is approaching towards 3 from the right hand side and on the right hand side of x is equal to 3 all the values of x are greater than 3 so what is the value for f of x when x greater than 3 so x is greater than 3 is out here so it is bx plus 3. So instead of f of x, what will you write? bx plus 3. So bx plus 3, which is equal to, now you can put x is equal to 3. This 3 plus only indicates that x is approaching towards 3 from the right hand side. So you can put x is equal to 3 in this case. So b into 3 plus 3, which is equal to, this is 3b plus 3. Is that clear to all of you so we have got the right hand limit as 3b plus 3 now let us find out for left hand limit for left hand limit for left hand limit we can write limit x tends to 3 minus f of x is equal to limit x tends to 3 minus so when x tends to 3 minus is there, it means that x is approaching towards 3 from the left hand side. And all the values of x on the left of x is equal to 3 is less than x, isn't it? That is x is less than 3. So what is the value for f of x when x less than 3? It is f of x is equal to ax plus 1. So you can write here ax plus 1, right? So which is equal to now, instead of x, you can put 3. 3 minus only indicates that it is approaching towards 3 from the left hand side. So we can put x is equal to 3 here. So a into 3 plus 1, which is equal to, uh, this is your 3a plus 1. Okay. Now, what is to be determined now? You have to find out the value for f of x when x exactly equal to 3. So right here at x is equal to 3 f of x is equal to what is the value for f of x f of x is equal to uh, when x is equal to 3 the value for f of x is x plus 1 so here you can write x plus 1 put x is equal to 3 here so f of 3 is equal to a into 3 plus 1 that is f of 3 is equal to 3a plus 1 so i think you have understood it now in the question it is given that since f of x is continuous at x is equal to 3 all these three values must be equal right so write down here since f of x is continuous f of x is continuous at x is equal to 3 uh, therefore what can i write that is right hand limit limit x tends to 3 plus f of x is equal to that is your right hand limit is equal to what is the left hand limit limit x tends to 3 minus f of x which is equal to that is your f of 3 which is equal to f of 3 so or what is right hand limit out here it is 3b plus 3 this is 3b plus 3 is equal to what is that left hand limit left hand limit is 3a plus 1 3a plus 1 is equal to what is f of 3 out here it is 3a plus 1 this is your 3a plus 1 so i think you have understood it but in the question it is asked that you have to get the relation between a and b okay so you have to find out the relation between a and b now 
in this case we can equate either first is equal to second or first is equal to third because second and third are equal out here so let us equate first with second or third that is 3a plus 1 so from here you can easily get the relation between a and b right so or 3b minus 3a is equal to 1 minus 3 so here 3 is taken common so let us take minus 3 as common because uh, on the right hand side you will have minus 2 if you take minus common minus will be cancelled right so minus 3 is taken common within bracket we have a minus b is equal to minus 2 so minus minus gets cancels out here okay so what is the answer now so or it is 3 into a minus b is equal to 2 so which is the required relation which is the required relation which is the required relation between which is the required relation between a and b so this is the final answer so you can copy it so now we'll do the next question so now we'll do the next question that is question number five uh, it is given that let f of x is equal to x cube plus x square minus 16 x plus 20 divided by x minus 2 whole square when x not equal to 2 so what is the meaning of x not equal to 2 either x is greater than 2 or x less than 2 for both x greater than 2 and x less than 2 we are using the same function of x which is equal to x cube plus x square minus 16 x plus 20 divided by x minus 2 whole square so in this case no need of getting the separate right hand limit and left hand limit just find out limit x tends to 2 okay and this f of x is equal to k when x exactly equal to 2 the yedi x is equal to 2 that say f of x value because these are k so in the question it is given that if f of x is continuous for all x then you have to get the value for k so so in the question it is given that the function f of x is continuous for all x only the doubtful case here is 2 you have to check the continuity at 2 and at 2 also the function f of x is continuous since f of x is continuous for all x the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to 2 also in the question it is given that f of x is continuous for all x so f of x is continuous for x is equal to 2 also so you have to find out the value for k so I told you that in this case no need of getting the separate right hand limit and left hand limit just find out therefore limit x tends to 2 f of x right so which is equal to limit x tends to 2 x tends to 2 means either x greater than 2 or x less than 2 in that case what is the value for f of x this is the expression right so it is x cube plus x square minus 16x plus 20 divided by this is your x minus 2 whole square so how can you evaluate this limit now let us expand x minus 2 whole square right so is equal to limit x tends to 2 x cube plus x square minus 16x plus 20 whole divided by x minus uh, let us expand it this is your a minus b whole square a square minus 2ab plus b b whole square what is a whole square it is x square minus twice ab means minus 4x plus 4 is that clear to all of you here a is x and b is 2 so if you use the formula of a minus b whole square you will get a square minus 2ab plus b whole square that is you will get x square minus 4x plus 4 right so let us divide it let us divide this numerator by the denominator okay the uh, timele exam ma exam ma yadi equation aaye bhane timele jun chai yo divide garcha yo chheu mai rough work mai dekhaunu yo paper bhayena yo paper kai chheu mai dekhaunu parcha hai timele thik cha ta x square minus 4x plus 4 le kela divide garincha numerator that is 
x cube plus x square minus 16x plus 29. Okay, so divide it. Okay, so let us divide it. There is x square and this is x cube. By which expression will you multiply this x square to get x cube? x lay, right? So x lay multiply. Karo. x cube minus 4x square plus 4x. Is that clear? x lay multiply by x square minus 4x plus 4i. So it is x cube minus 4x square plus 4x. Now we can subtract it. Change the sign minus plus minus x cube gets cancels. x square plus 4x square. That is 5x square minus... 20x that is minus 16x minus 4x same sign you have to add them minus 20x then write down plus 20 so it goes five times plus five right five into x square five x square minus 20x plus 20 right so it is minus plus minus all this will be cancelled that is cross right so in this case we get is equal to limit x tends to 2 what is the value of this fraction this is x plus 5 so I think uh, you have understood it. So this is your x plus 5. So you can put x is equal to 2 out here. That is 2 plus 5 is equal to what? This is your 7. So both right hand limit and left hand limit are included in this limit. And for both right hand limit and left hand limit is equal to 7. Okay. Now at x is equal to 2. At x is equal to 2. What is the value for f of x is equal to k? Therefore, f of x is equal to k. Now you can put f of 2 is equal to k. So now what is given in the question? Since f of x is continuous for all x. So this f of x is continuous for x is equal to 2 also. Right? Since f of x is continuous for all x. Therefore, f of x is continuous is continuous at x is equal to 2 understood now so next in the next step what will you write since f of x is continuous at x is equal to 2 therefore we can write limit x tends to 2 f of x is equal to f of 2 or what is the value for limit x tends to 2 f of x that is your 7 is equal to what is the value for f of 2 it is k therefore what is the value for k out here so k is equal to 7 so this is the final answer so what is the value for k in this case so k is equal to 7 so i think you have understood it so copy it we'll do the next question now Uh, now we'll do question number six number one the function f of x is defined as follows that is f of x is equal to one minus cos alpha x divided by x sine x when x not equal to zero so in this case also when x greater than zero and x less than zero x uh, x not equal to zero means uh, x greater than zero and x less than zero for both these conditions x greater than 0 and x less than 0 we have to use the same function here that is f of x is equal to 1 minus cos alpha x divided by x sine x so in this case also no need of getting the separate right hand limit and left hand limit just find out limit x tends to 0 f of x right so when x exactly equal to 0 what is the value for f of x in this case it is only half now it is given that f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 since f of x is continuous as at x is equal to 0 so you can write right hand limit is equal to left hand limit is equal to value of the function at x is equal to 0 so that we can get the value for alpha so what is the value for alpha if f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 right so in this case i told you that no need of getting the separate right hand limit and left hand limit just find out limit x tends to 0 okay so limit x tends to 0 f of x right so which is equal to limit x tends to 0 means x not equal to 0 
you can use this function that is 1 minus cos alpha x divided by x sin x now let us evaluate this limit both right hand limit and left hand limit are included in this expression right so what is 1 minus cos alpha x is equal to limit x tends to 0 what is 1 minus cos theta you know the formula 2 sin square theta by 2 you know that isn't it um, 1 minus cos x is equal to 2 sin square x by 2 you know this formula isn't it so what is 1 minus cos alpha x it is 2 sin square alpha x by 2 divided by x into this is your sin x keep it as it is sin x right so now in this case what can we say about this 2 2 is a constant quantity isn't it so 2 is taken outside so which is equal to 2 is taken outside limit then write down limit x tends to 0 limit x tends to 0 right next this sin square can be written as sin into sin isn't it a square means a into a likewise what is sin square alpha x by 2 sin alpha x by 2 into sin alpha x by 2 it is multiplied twice right so you can write here sin alpha x by 2 into sin alpha x by 2 this whole divided by so denominator is kept as it is x into sin x now since sin is there you know the standard limit standard limit of sin x that is limit x tends to 0 sin x by x is equal to 1 so you have to convert this sin into sin x by x form so in this case sin x here is alpha x by 2 here also sin alpha x by 2 but there is only sin x so first of all you multiply uh, you have to divide you divide both the numerator and the denominator by x square right so is equal to 2 into limit x tends to 0 so your numerator is sin alpha x by 2 into sin alpha x by 2 since two sine are out here so you divide it by x square divided by x into sin x by x square is that clear to all of you so here you can cancel x and square gets cancels right so you can cancel it so i think you have understood it so which is equal to 2 into limit x tends to 0 so now this x square actually here is x into x so you write both this x below this sign right so sine alpha x by 2 divided by x into sine alpha x by 2 divided by x divided by since there is sin x upon x is there you can write down limit out here so limit x tends to 0 this is your sin x divided by x so i think you have understood it now what will you do here is since instead of sin x instead of x here this is alpha x by 2 here also instead of x there is alpha x by 2 but you should convert it into the form of sin x by x instead of x there is alpha x by 2 so you should multiply this x by alpha by 2 so write it here alpha by 2 here also alpha by 2 actually we have multiplied this denominator by alpha square by 4 that should be cancelled so what we'll write here this is alpha square by 4 is that clear to all of you since you have to convert it into the form of sin x by x sin x by x form so there was only x so it should be multiplied by alpha by 2 it should also be multiplied by alpha by 2 that is in the denominator we have multiplied both these x by alpha by 2 that is alpha square by 4 but we are multiplying ourselves i mean have multiply got this one the i cancel go to i mean kegon over into alpha square by 4 is that clear so divided by this is this is all right that is limit x tends to 0 sin x by x okay so which is equal to now 2 into now alpha square by 4 is constant you can take it outside limit so this is your alpha square by 4 into now write down limit for both this expression so limit x tends to 0 sine alpha x by 2 divided by alpha x by 2 right so next 
into limit uh, for this for this second expression also we can write down the limit limit x tends to 0 sine alpha x by 2 divided by alpha x by 2 is that clear to all of you so whole divided by so this is your standard form that is limit x tends to 0 sine x by x is equal to 1 so you can write 1 is that clear now so now in the next step what will you do so which is equal to this two ones are two two twos are four this is your alpha square by two into alpha square by two into what is the value of both these limits that is this is also standard limit which is equal to one and this is also limit x tends to zero sine alpha x by two divided by alpha x by two which is also one which is equal to alpha square by two so i think you have understood it so you can copy it so in this case both right hand limit is equal to left hand limit is equal to alpha square by 2 okay now you have to get the value for f of x when x exactly equal to 0 now at x is equal to 0 so in the question what is the value for f of x when x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 what is the value for f of x it is half therefore f of x is equal to half therefore instead of x you can write 0 here so f of 0 is equal to half is that clear now now in the question it is given that f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 that means right hand limit at x is equal to 0 is equal to left hand limit at x is equal to 0 is equal to the value of the function f of x when x exactly equal to 0 so you can write here since f of x is continuous is continuous at x is equal to 0 so you can take the screenshot out here because uh, i'll drop this left hand portion so since f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 what can you write limit x tends to 0 f of x both right hand limit and left hand limit are here limit x tends to 0 f of x which is equal to f of 0 is that clear so or what was the value for limit x tends to 0 f of x it was alpha square by 2 alpha square by 2 is equal to what is f of 0 it is half from both the sides this 2 2 gets cancels so alpha square is equal to 1 or what are the values of alpha so alpha is equal to plus minus 1 so this is your answer so if f of x is continuous at x is equal to 0 find the value of alpha so what are the values of alpha here so alpha is equal to plus minus 1 so that is your answer so i think you have understood it you can copy it so this much is for today so you can revise all the problems that we did today Okay, the Timale Azu Zatimani Hamili problems are going to be a very important revision. One of the most important things is that IIT is a very important thing. This is the joint entrance exam. This problem is a very important thing. This is the next class. This is the next class. We will do more problems on continuity of a function.